everyone. Welcome to the How to Podcast series. This gentleman on the screen is joining me today, and he is a coach, and he helps coaches. Uh, and we're going to talk about all great stuff around coaching, about adding value to your community, and the Mindful Coach Association is something we're going to talk about. And my guest today, Brett Hill, is with me, and uh, he's joining me from Gig Harbor, I believe we talked about. And That's Brett, right, welcome yeah. to the podcast. Nice to have you here. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. It's awesome to have you here as a co-host. Your background in coaching is something we need as podcasters. We need to find a good podcast coach. So what I'm hoping in our conversation today is we can unpack for our listener, what are some of those key traits and key things that we should look for if we are going to go out today and do a Google search and try to find somebody who can coach us in our podcasting journey. But first, before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about what you do, who you help, and and a little bit more about you. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm um, a mindful somatic coach is kind of the big technical word that I call myself. And really what I help people do is connect to what you might call their authentic voice. And so this is perfect for podcasting because many times people are struggling in a way to find a way to speak what's really true for them in a way that has some authority that what I you maybe have heard the term gravitas, like things that have gravity. And I try to help people find their way to speaking with authentic connection to the truth of their experience. And when you do that, and you do it in a way that is really embodied and not just an idea, and that's the somatic, soma means body base, and so body sensing, you, helping people really connect to what feels good, what really feels alive. And when you speak from that place, it's really, really a different voice that you have yeah. than when you're thinking, well, I think, you know, I'm not so sure about the whatever, and, you know, I'm not worried about that, you know, it's completely different than... Well, you know, I'm really concerned about something. And you can see, you can just feel the difference in like, I'm up here, I'm in thoughts. And then all of a sudden, it's like, I'm, I am really concerned. I have a concern. The way you speak, the, the thing that you're connected to changes. And when that does, your message changes, your delivery changes, and your impact changes. Mm -hmm. So I focus helping people find their way to that kind of a, place inside so they can connect to that and then present that outside in your background who has stood out to you in your history as a coach that added value to you and you're like there's something about this person or their coaching style mm -hmm. that i identify with something that i want to duplicate in my own coaching who was yeah. that for you and what was it well that's a really great question i um, I don't know. I would say if I had any kind of, I don't want to call it a gift, but let's just say sort of mm, talent or predisposition towards something that really helped me. You know, have you ever had something in your life that I don't know where I learned to do this, but I've done that a lot and it really worked for me. One of the things I've always been able to do is to find people that I felt like were really models for what they did and really just go and sit at their feet and learn everything I can from them. So to answer your question more directly, um, I learned somatic psychotherapy from the founder of Hakomi named Ron Kurtz. And when I saw this guy do his work, I thought, well, wow, <laughs> I've got to know everything there is to know about this because it was really, it seemed magical that what he was doing, the way that people would open up and connect to deeper experiences within themselves. And this was straight up psychotherapy rather than coaching. Um, but I still wanted to know everything there was about it because it really translates super well to the coaching world. And then also there was a, a gentleman named Ron Eisman who was also in the Hakomi world. Hakomi is a, a form of somatic psychology. And just watching these guys do their work was like watching, you know, a, a maestro lead an orchestra yeah. or a, a virtuoso play a piano. And you're like going, what do they know about piano? I want to know, right? So I really sat their feet for, for years and years and learned what I learned. And and now I've taken that, a lot of that information and translated it into the coaching world. So rather than going for the, you know, the emotional woundedness part that we do in psychotherapy, with coaching, we go towards resourcefulness and resilience. And so we're 
looking for where what are your natural resources and helping you align with um, the things that are accessible to you that enable you rather than disempower you. They're kind of two sides of the same coin. So it's a little bit about where do you want to focus? And so but with coaching, you know, a lot of those same skills that I learned from these masters of their craft apply to the coaching world. So that's what I do is I also teach coaches. I teach coaches how to do this. So the one thing I, the key words I picked up on there when you're talking was natural resources. Yeah, well, absolutely. Let's go, like, let's go a little deeper on that. What, how would you, how would you expand on that for in a podcasting sense or a content creator space, developing your own natural resources? Let's talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, what is it? If I'm talking to someone and they say to me, you know, I really want to do a podcast. My first question is like, well, what moves you? What is the impact you want to have? And, you know, it might not be first level stuff like, well, I just want to get the word out about how to do X, Y, Z. And so I'm going to go deep and I'm going to say, why? Why do you want to go? There? What is it that you hope to achieve on the people that are listening? When they walk away from hearing you, what do you want them to walk away feeling like? Right. And then what does that do for you? And so if you can connect to someone, well, if it would just feel really good to be helpful. Okay. So there's something in you that wants to be helpful. Now we're landing in the personhood of the podcaster. Like what, what is it in you that wants to help and how does that feel? And how can we amplify that so that whenever you get on in front of the microphone, what you're connecting to is that thing in you that wants to be helpful. And when you do that, you're going to come across so authentic and so real that no matter what you're teaching, even if it's like I used to be a technical evangelist for Microsoft and others, and I was always really passionate about the technology because I thought it was fascinating and I'm connected to that. That's what you communicate. So it's really about paying attention to what are you connected to? Mm you're speaking yeah and the, that, yeah i love that and the other thing too when i talk to new podcasters they have a big th idea for a podcast and the yeah. one thing i like to encourage them is to to really hone in on their why and by answering by filling in the, re the rest of the sentence so my podcast is about so that and then answer that question and then do it again yep. so that and keep going down that step of so that so my podcast mm -hmm. is a podcast for healthcare workers mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that they will understand how to care for their patients good so that their patients will heal faster so that and we keep going down those steps until we get to the point where it's like this is my audience and this is who i want to serve and i kind of like yeah. that path of going from big to more focused and and then you have a pretty good idea of where your content sits and how to come yeah, to the microphone I mean, that's a, yeah that's a great way to go to help people frame in their reason for living in a way if you want to call it that you know reason for having a podcast who you're serving and and how you want to impact them if you go to and take that so that and and make sure that the final so that is so that i can serve the world so that i can give voice to my mission so that I can be helpful on the planet so that we can all live in a better world. Whatever it is actually truly moving you to, to be more than just another voice that's trying to, to get the word out there, but actually something what's, what's personal in there. I want to be sure to deal that into the, so that's because that goes from the outbound to the audience and then all the way back to the, inner motive for making that choice for making that happen mm, does that make I sense like i like it i'm with you i'm following i'm following you're doing good coaching by the way uh the other thing i love <laughs> is when you talked about going from the the kind of thinking stage to the feeling stage as a host where That's it's now exactly. how i feel about this topic not here is the topic i yeah. i find that a lot of content creators and authors and whoever are putting content into the world are all in this information stage but how does it relate to you? And why is this important to you? Why is it important to have, you know, Brett on the podcast today? Why, why, like, okay, information stage to, I really want people to find a good coach and connect with a coach. And here are some of the, the key aspects of a good coach when you're looking for somebody. I want to get past information into 
this is why it's important to find a good coach in your yeah. life. Yeah, I mean, there's we're awash in information. Right. We have tons of information. So the problem isn't so much information, although it, it can be. You know, like you, there's people who have bad information. And then the, the difficulty is there's so much information that there's n too much noise. And you, it's hard to find the, you know, the really good pieces from all the junk pieces. And that but that's a whole other conversation. The the key there, though, is that what people really want is connection. Yeah. People want to connect their motive, their feeling, the reason that they want to put it out there is because X, Y, Z. What is it? What is it that causes you? And this is the way I talk about it sometimes. Uh, what lights you up? You know, what is it that lights you up about your show or your idea? And really, really, really getting clear about that. Not so much. I mean, the audience is a key part of it. But in this, but when you frame it from this piece, it's more about what's the inner part of it? What's how is it that this is going to help you be more you? Right. Be more whole, be more connected, be more um, of yourself in the world. And doing that from an authentic place that is uh, coming from a deeper place than, oh, I just want to be popular and I have a shiny new podcast because that looks cool. And that, yeah, there's nothing wrong with being cool, but that's only going to take you so far. There are a lot of cool, a lot of coolness out there. And if you want to go there, great, if that does something for you. But let's find out what that is. And land in that and, and see how far it goes in the early days of my podcasting i was out there beating the bushes trying to find a coach who could help me get started and build community i like to do life with other podcasters we do all this quite on our own by ourselves, in our own little studio and there's really no interaction there's no one else here with me right now and mm -hmm. you kind of feel like you're in a vacuum so i wanted to get into community and i would sign up for these amazing coaching programs, I'd put money out that I don't have and I'd show up in a room <laughs> and there'd be a, a wall of videos that I could watch, but I'm again by myself. And I'm like, this by is yourself. not community. This is not coaching to me. And my coach never showed up until it was time to collect the next month's rent. Really? Yeah, exactly, like, right. This is not what I envisioned as far as being coached, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And and when I would leave these groups, they'd be like, oh, so sorry to see you leave. Or, you know, is there any way we can improve? I'm like, maybe show yeah, up. Yeah, you can show up. <laughs> right. right? Well, well, you really name something that's so powerful. And I, I tell people this all the time. Um, in fact, that's exactly the reason I started the Mindful Coach Association, because there's a lot of coaches out there who want to do really, really, who are doing really, really great work. And it's so powerful and inspiring to hear their stories because I you know, I mentioned I teach coaches so I hear a lot about the great work that people are doing and um it's so like oh my god this is amazing they're out there working in prisons or with you know disadvantaged communities or special interest groups of immigrants and people struggling with really really difficult challenging life scenarios and they have the courage to go out there and and try to make life better for people um, on a lot of different levels, you know, from everything from spiritual work to, hey, let's let's help you figure out how to apply for a driver's license, you know. Yeah. Um, and I was just so inspired by that. And we what they what these coaches don't need is, you know, a pre-recorded set of, of videos to tell them how to get from A to Z. What we do need is community and to hear each other and support each other and learn about what we need and um, and so that's why I created the Mindful Coach Association, um, which people can join if they're aligned with the mission. Is is exactly that, and 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 it's hap that's happening. So we meet, and it's in person. You know, everybody shows up, and we meet. And we do breakout rooms. We just have, and we have a great time. So, so while we're there, Brett, let's talk about how people connect with that because I like to send people there right now. We'll have links in the show notes, but talk a little bit more about that. Sure, sure. Yeah, uh, it's simple. You just go to mindfulcoachassociation.com and you can sign up for a free community membership there. And you can, if you're a coach or you're offering services in a way that is mindfully oriented, or you, what I say is you value mindfulness in your life and work, um, that's a particular kind of slice of the service industry, people who have had or value bringing mindful connections and we can talk about what all that means yeah. into their work um then 
you're welcome to join this and come to our meetings and um, and support the the association. You get a directory listing and maybe become a, a guest on my podcast, The Mindful Coach, as well as a bunch of other benefits that we have coming our way. And it's really, really a great community. Awesome. And I'm glad you mentioned your podcast. Thank you. Um, tell us as listeners, when we come to The Mindful Coach, uh, where should we start? Uh, you have a catalog of episodes. Where should we go to the beginning? Or we go to the most recent? And please then go deeper on the word mindful, because I think some yeah. people have a misnomer around what mindful really is. I would like your definition as it relates to what you're doing. Yeah, so let's start with that, if you don't sure. mind, because mindful is sort of, um, it's got, but like when I do coaching with people, I tell people I'm a mindful somatic coach, but it's important for people to understand that I don't teach mindfulness per se. It's kind of like, if you want to learn how to be mindful, I can help. But um, it's not traditional in the sense that you're going to go off and do a, an attention-based meditation. Mindfulness means, in and of itself, simply being aware of what is going on with you, your emotions, your feelings, your sensations, your thoughts, um, and just paying attention to that in a way that's right now. In other words, I'm not thinking about tomorrow. I'm not thinking about yesterday. I'm not thinking about, I wish I had said this to that guy, or I wish I had done this, or worried about something. That's nothing wrong with that. That's just not now. That's thinking about some event in the future, in the past. Yeah. Um, and the problem with not being mindful is that if you're not paying attention to what's happening now, you can spend your whole life just thinking about what should have happened or what you wish would happen and not really be present for the beauty that's right in front of you. Mm. And so that's the, one of the key parts about mindfulness. And I, and I say this a lot to people is like there are diamonds at your feet. It's just that people don't notice because we're too busy, worried about that, this, or how am I going to get from here to there? Or there's so many demands on our nervous system. And this is because the culture is designed this way to like constantly stimulate. Remember I mentioned before, there's so much noise, yeah. so much, so many people trying to grab your attention and billions of dollars being spent by really smart people on how to hook your attention and get you to pay attention to what they want you to pay attention right. to. So the very first part of mindfulness, um, becoming more mindful is first realizing that attention is the most important asset that you have. It's the most important thing that you possess as a human being. And we pay very little attention to developing a capacity to manage our attention. Mm. And that is the very first thing you have to learn to do in a certain way is to like notice that what you attend to matters. And if you aren't consciously making a choice about that, someone else is making a choice for you. Interesting. And so, so the very first thing about mindfulness is making a decision. In other words, I'm aware of the fact that I'm choosing to attend to something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's kind of like you didn't wake up one day and find yourself in the university, right? <laughs> or you didn't wake up one day and found yourself in front of a microphone. You made a choice to do that. Right. In the same way, I can say, I am going to pay attention to my thoughts, feelings, emotions, sensations. And that's all. I'm just going to notice what the heck is that? What's going on in this world of, of mind? In other words, uh, what's it like to be you? Mm -hmm. Walking around in the world as you are you tense? Are you upset? Are you withdrawn? Are you fearful? Are you exuberant? Are you overexcited? Are you grounded? Are you, you know, and obviously we move through states. So it's not all one thing, but knowing what that is and tracking and paying attention to how you do you in the world is a huge part of becoming an effective presence in the world. Because if you haven't done that work, then you can't really connect to the opportunity that life presents to us. Awesome. So your podcast, where do we start? Where do we go? Uh, the Mindful Coach. Yeah. Mindful Coach podcast. You can just look it up. And uh, I have um, a total of two, count of two episodes with another one dropping on Thursday. So awesome. it's a brand new podcast. Nice. 
And uh, I have six in the bank, so to speak, and they're in, uh, being edited. And it features members of the Mindful Coach Association right now where I'm just interviewing other people about what they're doing. But we are going to include skill building and marketing and um, opportunities to go learn how to be a coach and all kinds of stuff are going to be in the in the show. So it has a, a long um, storied future. <laughs> I love it. I love it that you have it all planned out. So for everyone listening, make sure you go to the show notes and Brett's podcast will be there. You can click a link. You're already on the app. You're already listening to a podcast. Thank you. You can jump over to Brett's podcast and add that to your favorite. Subscribe so that you get every episode of Brett's episodes as they come out. They'll just automatically go right into your device and you'll be all set to go to follow along on the journey. I would love for you to connect with Thank Brett you. on that. Brett, let's talk Thank a little you. bit about, we talked um, in our pre-interview chat. I gave you an example of what I'm seeing in podcasting for coaches. Again, I'm using air quotes where okay. um, there's the American Idol television show uh, where you mm -hmm. have four judges who sit behind a desk and tell you if you're worthy or not to go to the next round. And you stand up in front of them and some people are not ready and they're laughed off the stage. And it's not a great experience to watch. Some people just love watching this happen on, on TV, but I get uncomfortable watching people mm -hmm. tear somebody's dream down in front of them on TV. And then you compare that mm -hmm. to another show, another music talent show called The Voice, where you have coaches and they flip chairs around if they want you on your team. But even if they don't, they they give people on the stage creative coaching moments where they tell them what they can do to improve and they invite them back. So even though there might be disappointment that they haven't made it through that round, they're being coached instead of being judged. And what I'm finding mm -hmm. in the podcast space is there's a plethora of judges who, mm -hmm. if you don't have the right headphone, microphone, website, title, whatever, you're not doing it correctly and you can now leave the stage. Um, and I don't <laughs> like that feeling. I think we need to be more yeah. inclusive. An example I think I shared with you is a friend had a podcast for men on men's mental health. He had his own struggles. And he was openly mocked by an expert in our field. And he felt like giving up because he wasn't doing it the right way. Again, air quotes. And his message is so powerful that I think I, when he reached out to me, I'm like, listen, don't give up. Don't don't stop doing your, your sending your message into the world based on one piece of feedback from an expert. I said, your yeah. message is powerful and it helps men. And we need you. So don't stop. Um, despite what Love you've that. heard. So from your perspective, with all the coaches you've worked with and your coaching background yourself, can you outline for us as pot new podcasters, some of the things we should look for in a coach that will help help us build us up and not tear us down? Because I really want to yeah. change that whole dynamic of looking for a podcast coach. Again, I don't want to go to a library of videos and sit there by myself mm -hmm. and watch in an empty room. I need somebody who walks with me. I need a community that walks with me that I can feel accountable to on those days where I don't feel like doing it, but people surround me in a coaching experience. So can you outline for us some of those key things we should look yep. for? Absolutely. The number one thing that you should look for in a coach is one you feel good about. Okay. And what I mean by that is that research shows that coaching and therapy the relationship that you have with your coach is as important or more important than what they do for you. So you can take four or five coaches and you can predict reasonably well the outcome of success in terms of was this user, if you ask the client, was this helpful for me? The, the, it correlates to success correlates to the quality of the relationship. And so if you feel good about the coach, then that's a big plus. If someone has great credentials and you don't feel connected or good about the relationship, that's a really big negative, regardless of what they know. So personally, I would say, you know, you know, David, you're you're a better coach than that supposed expert because what you're doing is you were 
advocating for something that I call like uh, what lights you up. You're like taking the natural enthusiasm somebody has and respecting and honoring that and encouraging that. And that's number one another thing you want to look for in a coach as well. You want to find someone who respects your enthusiasm. Mm. And so a rule in my coaching and in life in general is encourage energy where you find it. Like someone's really enthusiastic about something. I want to say, yes, because remember we talked about natural resources. Right. What are your, that's a resource. Yeah. And when you're coaching someone just from a, you know, a coaching practice, you know, the theory of coaching, when someone lands or experiences themselves being enthusiastic, they're neurologically, it's what they call a limbic state shift. The person neurologically begins to resource in a way where they're now they're excited. Now they're motivated. Now they are resourced in ways that can help overcome obstacles. You can't be excited about something and depressed at the same time. Right. Or, and so consequently, as a coach, I'm going to want to know, I want that person to really, truly own and feel and identify with the fact there's somebody that is excited about their topic or their, their mission and really, really identify that. So there's a re-identification piece here as well. Yeah. So, that, so we talked about relationship. We talked about encouragement of your enthusiasm. And finally, one that really listens, one that really, really knows how to listen to you. You're not just a part of a program or a structured sequence of events. You're a person. Yeah. And the coach is attending to you, modifying the program for you to fit who you are and really tuning things up to suit what you need rather than um, trying to move you through, uh, you know, a, a, a high volume program. That's a, it's a cookie cutter scenario. I love it because I've been trapped in so many funnels <laughs> and I can't find my way out. And even though the <laughs> word fun is in the word funnel, they're not always fun. I got to say, no, because uh, you get you get the series of emails that come to your inbox and you're like, I, I'm i still waiting to talk to the person that I, I really connect with on their podcast or their book or their coaching yeah. program. I'm still waiting for time with them. Like, that's where I, I think the miss is sometimes. And I think if you're looking for a coach, you want to have the ability to actually speak with them one on one or in a community setting to the other part was I was in one coaching program and there was so many people there that you never got to speak. You maybe got 30 yeah. seconds on the microphone yeah. and it's the next and then the next the little countdown clock in the top. You're like, um, yeah, I just want to ask a question about, oh, I'm out of time. I'm like, oh, come on. Right. <laughs> I'm like, I'm paying for this. Like I'm actually paying to be here in this community and my, my host has no time for me. And well, you're naming it beautifully because that's what we're missing in this world is connection, right. meaningful connection. And so I what I hear you lobbying for and, and, and raising the value of is the need for that connection. And uh, I think there's a tremendous uh, service to be had in being able to do that with people. It's a it's a high touch scenario like, you know, the coaches, once they reach a certain level of of success, it's very hard for them to give right. that personal connection to a lot of people. And so, so things get aggregated and moved up and people like people begin to have that experience of being kind of in the audience and not on, not talking to the guy, but you're just kind of, you know, you start to have that experience uh, more and more with people as they get uh, more successful. But for a lot of people, we're not there, you know, right. and it's kind of like, uh, you know, people can pick up the phone, they can talk to me, and they can talk to a lot of people who are really, really, really good at what they do. So you don't have to go for the top tier, you know, $10,000, $20,000 mastermind courses. There are a lot of people who really are good that offer a lot of value. Um, and so you that, that aren't uh, charging an arm and a leg for their services. Yeah. And I can already hear people at that top tier level that offer coaching saying, Dave, Brett. There is no way in my calendar that I can speak to X number of people on a regular basis and have time in my calendar for them. That's not logical, right? So yeah. that's a different level. That's something different than what I'm talking about. I'm not taking away from that because people find value in that and that's amazing. 
but I'm talking about maybe that lower level where you do want to have that one on one time, whatever that looks like. Is there anything from your perspective too, then, Brett, before we close off here in a moment, where there's some warning signs that you see coaches doing and you're like, if I could just get up in front of coaches for a moment and say, could everyone please back away from this practice or this mode of operation as a coach because it's not as effective as you think it is? Is there anything you give to coaches as a little warning sign? Well, that's an interesting question. I haven't put a lot of thought into that. I would say that as a coach, I am inundated with um, offers to join fifteen, twenty thousand dollar masterminds, and the number one pitch is, you know, we're going to turn you into a six figure coach while you're, you know, on the beach in Bermuda, and uh, you spend fifteen minutes a day on your computer. I see a lot, a lot, a lot of that kind of stuff. And I would argue that a lot of coaches I know, they're not in it. We all want to be successful. Some are, some are really, you know, money motivated. Most coaches are not in this because they're money motivated. If you're really money motivated, then you, there are a lot of ways, easier ways to make money than being a coach. Uh, and so it's like, you know, learn to program a computer. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can start off, you know, at 80 to $140,000. So you can, you can become a coach though. Uh, and begin, people are lining up to do that because they feel the need in the world and they want to be helpful. And so align with resources and voices and communities and others who you feel like your kindred spirits with and don't necessarily subscribe to, um, you know, a gigantic number of these bigger, more expensive programs when they are primarily trying to push your, uh, you know, your financial success rather than your mission. Um, and, and and I want to make clear, those are related. Those are related. So I would just say, and you have to take this with a grain of salt. That's just my personal experiences. I'm so inundated with, you know, you're going to crush it as a coach going from six to seven figures in 90 days guaranteed. You know, it's kind yeah. of like that kind of mm -hmm. thing is out there all over the place. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, watch, just watch for that. There are uh, efforts out there. There are people out there who do conscious marketing that do um, all kinds of things. And, you know, and the Mindful Coach Association in a way was created to kind of be a safe haven for coaches so that we can learn and use and resource each other, learn from each other. Um, so as a group, we get together and go, well, who, what works for you? Did you, or you do you have a VA that you work with, virtual assistant that you work with, or what podcast platform you're using? And we can just share notes basically. And that way we can help each other. Love it. Okay. So again, before we go, I have one more question for you, but uh, before I ask that question, sure. Again, let's bring everybody up to speed again, where to connect with you and where to connect with the Mindful Coach Association one more time. I'd like to add that in here before yeah. my last question. Sure. Mindfulcoachassociation.com yeah. is where you can find the co the association. You can join that for absolutely free. And uh, you can, we'll meet in a meeting uh, that we have every week. Um, the other way you can find me is themindfulcoach.com. And so that's my personal website where we can, you can book one-on-one -on -one sessions with me and see what else I'm up to, get on the newsletter. And uh, there's a lot going on. I have the Mindful Coach podcast. I have the Connected Conversation. There's a whole other podcast that I'm doing about mindful communications. So I've got a lot of happening, and I'd love to, love to have you in the conversation. Awesome. I love it, Brett. Thank you for being part of this. The one question I have right at the end is for a coach who has a coaching business, they're going to come and find you and be part of your community, which I'm happy to, to make that happen through the show. But what is the connection between a coaching program and a podcast? Are you seeing benefits? Are you seeing ways that, because there are coaches that are listening going, I don't even have a show. I never thought of having a show. Mm -hmm. Is it important? Should oh. I do it? What is your advice? So how can a podcast help your coaching? Yeah. Though? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a couple of ways. One is it gives you a lot of material to work with. And so you can just get on front of a microphone and start talking about what you're passionate about, invite people that share your, your, um, you know, your expertise or your passions, have the conversations, get those transcribed. That becomes SEO for your yes, website, yes. Uh, your search engine optimization. And I'm sure you go over all this stuff in your, in your, 
uh, communications with people as well. And it also gives you tons of stuff to be able to push out to social media, just little quotes and extracts. It takes work to do that. You put that podcast on your landing page for your services and people go, oh, this guy is not just a regular coach, like just to decide. He didn't decide today to be a coach. The guy's in it. You know, he's really you. It's uh, what they call, you know, social proof yeah. that you're somebody that is really a leader in the field or contending to be a leader in the field and also gives a way for people to hear your voice and see, do they like your tone? Do they like your message? Do they like the way that you come across? Do they, they can get to hear your values without ever having to connect with you directly. And then when they do connect with you directly, they have a good idea about what you're about. They're kind of, to use a marketing term, they're kind of pre-sold on yeah. you. And that's why they're contacting you. Yeah. It's a great way to open that door with a new, with new clients. I love it. Brett, Thank you for being on the How to Podcast series. I'm so excited. I'm excited to share what you do for coaches and, and helping each other and a new podcast for me to listen to and several podcasts for me to listen to. So I'm excited. <laughs> I'll be adding that. You'll see some listens here in Canada. So thank you for creating well, content. I love it. And thank you for your passion to help. And it's like, you know, we've been talking a little bit about, you know, what lights people up and it doesn't, doesn't uh, escape my notice that, you know, you're really, really truly care about people and you know you're pushing to connect with people and really being an advocate for that and I'm personally i just really appreciate that work yeah again right back to you as well and i love that you're helping coaches and um with my limited uh experience with some of the coaches in the past i'm looking for that coach too to to be who we talked about today and if i can help somebody in that way learning from you brett that's 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 what I'm selfishly here for as well, to pick some stuff from you that I can maybe use to help other people. So thank you for being so yeah, willing. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. So everyone, please go check out all the show notes and support Brett and all those mindful coaches out there. And uh, Brett, thank you again for being part of the podcast. You're welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs>